Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and today's question is from a cross between individuals with genotypes as follows. 1000 offspring was produced, the class that was as follows included 351 individuals are the genes C, D and E on the same or on different chromosomes. So today we are going to repeat some famous experiments uh, of the beginning of the past century, which proved that uh, certain genes can be whether on the same chromosome or on the different chromosomes without even extensive um, equipment such as uh, atomic uh, microscopy or any other modern techniques. So take a look. Let's uh, first of all assume that we have just one gene and one gene in one individual uh, would be represented by two alleles. These alleles can be uh, of the same kind or can be of the different kind. And let's imagine that uh, here we have male individual and this male individual has uh, two chromosomes. So one chromosome, another chromosome. This is two homologous chromosomes and on one chromosome he has dominant allele C and on the other has recessive allele C. And we also have another individual, uh, female, and she also has on the same homologous chromosomes also two alleles. In the same locus, recessive allele C, and on the other chromosome also recessive allele C. So what kind of combinations such a couple can produce for this particular locus, for this particular gene C? For example, they can produce uh, offspring that would inherit this uh, chromosome from the father side and this chromosome from the mother side. So we would have combination of two chromosomes. I'm not going to draw chromosomes, just would show uh, alleles, dominant C and small c. Another combination can be this chromosome from the father side and this chromosome from the mother side. Again, we are going to have dominant C and small c alleles here. Yet another combination can be this chromosome from the father side and this chromosome from the mother side. In this case we would have small c, small c, so the person would inherit two recessive alleles from both parents. And the last combination would be if individual would inherit this chromosome from the father side and this chromosome from the mother side. Again this is unique combination two recessive alleles. So as you see such combination would produce a dominant phenotype if we have simple, if we talk today about simple Mendelian genetics, so these two heterozygous genotypes would make dominant phenotype. And here we have another 50% of the offspring or we also can say one half of the offspring that is going to be homozygous recessive and another 50% which is going to be homozygous dominant. So we can put 50% here and 50% here. And uh, again, when we do statistics, usually we also can say that 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 here. So as you see, we can use different numbers, which actually going to be uh, the same, would represent the same 50%. But uh, we can use any of these numbers. Now I want you to show another explanation. Maybe it's going to be more clear for you. Imagine that one person here, male, has a genotype dominant C and recessive C and another individual here, female, has genotype small c, small c. 
And now we just build simple Punnett square. And what we see? 50% of the progeny are going to be of the dominant phenotype and another 50% of the progeny going to be of the recessive phenotype. 50% dominant, just what we got in our previous uh, picture here. And another 50% is going to be homozygous recessive. Now what we done, we done a cross between just one locus with one gene C, which represented by two alleles, dominant allele and recessive allele. Now we have to do the same thing with each pair of loci and genes. So we have gene C, D and E. Every time when we cross, for example, we have dominant and recessive allele D here, two recessive alleles D here, it's going to be the same picture as what we already done for the gene C, for the locus C, uh, numbers are going to be the same. And the same is true for gene E. So every time if uh, these genes would be on the different chromosomes, we are going to expect certain proportions of uh, individuals of certain uh, genotype and thus phenotype. Take a look. Uh, we are asked for certain phenotype, which is individual have to be dominant phenotype for the gene C, have to be dominant genotype for the gene D, and recessive for the gene E. And as you see, for the gene C, we expect an individual, like 50% of the individual, to be of this genotype and uh, dominant phenotype. And as for the gene D, again, we expect that 50% to be also of the dominant phenotype. So to be capital D and small d, so one half and one half here. And as for the gene E, if we cross heterozygous with homozygous recessive, we expect that 50% would be of the homozygous recessive genotype. Small e, small e, 50%. So if uh, we are looking for individuals who are going to be dominant phenotype for the gene C uh, and dominant phenotype for the gene D. So when we connect two probabilities with the word and, and, and recessive uh, genotype and phenotype for the gene E, again and, when we can connect um, different probabilities with the word and, that means we have to apply a product rule. We have to multiply all these independent probabilities and what we are going to have here, one half multiplied by one half would be one quarter, multiplied by one half would be one eighth. So that means we expect that one eighth of all uh, progeny to belong to this uh, phenotype if we cross these two genotypes, parents with these two genotypes. So one eighth now would make out of uh, 1000, so 1000 multiplied by 1, 8 would be 125 individuals. So if all these uh, three genes would be on different chromosomes, we expect that 125 individuals would belong to this phenotype. But according to our problem, we see that uh, such a cross produced 351 individuals of this phenotype. And you see, this is very different from what we got here. And what does this number mean? That means that uh, some of these genes, we are not sure which ones, but it can be two or even all three, 
have to be on the same chromosome and we can say that they have to be linked. So we know for sure that these genes, at least two of them, have to be on the same chromosomes. And we also can say for sure that uh, these three genes are not on the three different chromosomes, so are not assorted independently like what we see here. And this is going to be our answer. This, again, these genes are not assorted independently. That means uh, at least two of them have to be on the same chromosome. And this is all for today. Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.